Hello and welcome to the infinite loop error tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be learning about infinite loop errors, how you might accidentally cause one of these, how you can prevent them, and how with a few simple fixes, you could make systems that run every frame without crashing Unity. Okay, so first things first, what is an infinite loop error? Let's make one really quick. So I'm going to just create an empty, we'll call this our loop error machine. And I'm gonna add an FSM to this. And the best way to do it is to just put in something like a send event, and we'll just say that this one sends off next, goes to the next state, and then we're gonna copy this and put this in that state where it sends back. So essentially what this machine does is it starts here, but the only thing it's built to do is to send off to the next state. When it gets here, it's gonna send back, and it's just gonna go back and forth infinitely. And Unity is going to do this as many times as it possibly can. So if I press play, you'll see that our FSM gets disabled, right? All this gets grayed out, says disabled down here. You could see up here in the component, it's turned off. And if you look over here at our states, you could see that they say 1000 next to each of them, which means this FSM ran through both of these states a thousand times right when the game started. And if I go over to console, you'll see that we have our loop error machine, loop count exceeded limit. 1000 override the default limit 1000 in the FSM inspector so you could change the max loop override but I just wanted to show you that that's where it maxes out and that's what stops so the thing that's happening here is playmaker is doing us a huge favor playmaker is stopping this FSM from running way too much way too fast because if it didn't there's a high likelihood that unity would crash even for the simplest of systems if a computer is trying to run it as many times as possible, as fast as it can, that can overwhelm the application or whatever it is and crash it. So I'm just gonna hit stop here. And you might be saying, well, when am I ever gonna send an event back and forth? Well, you have to remember that this is just an example, but a lot of times you might end up with something like a bool test or an int compare or whatever it is, any type of action where you're gonna be sending an event based off of a result to the next state that might want to send back if the result is different, you could end up with logic that just sends back and forth. Okay, so you really have to keep an eye out for the type of logic. The, the really good example here would be if we made this bull test say, is true, right? So if, if it is true, we send next. And over here, if you put in a bull test, checking is true, and if it's false, it can send back, right? So you have, you have it going back and forth. Now this works out just fine, as long as that bool value stays in the condition once it gets over here, but you might have something that's like a bool flip happen before it. So if over here you're looking for something that's true and you wanna send it over here, it comes back, and if the bool flip changes that is true to its opposite value, so that'd send it back to false, this bool test would send back. But if you only want that bool to be true in that first state, and you need to reset that bool value, and sometimes it's as simple as changing your bool flip to go after whatever it is that you're doing. Unless, of course, it was running every frame, in which case, after processing through the state once, you're setting yourself up for another infinite loop error. Let's not get too carried away with all of the many, many, many examples of how you can cause an infinite loop error. Just remember that what it's about is sending back and forth immediately. I do wanna show you if we put our send events back in here. Okay, so we'll send back with this one. And over here, this one we'll send next. Okay, so this, if I just play it really quick, show you that this causes the infinite loop error again. Okay, you'll see it says a thousand. Now, if I come in here, there is a way where if you just put in an int add right here at the top, and you say number of loops, and you add one every time. Okay, so I press play, and I come over here. You'll see that that int did, in fact, reach a thousand. Okay, that means it went back and forth here a thousand times. So if you wanted to change that, you can come over to this FSM tab and go into the settings, and you can see that the max loop override can be set to something like five. So if I play this now, 
you'll see that our FSM got disabled and we got our infinite loop error, but only off of five loops. That's why our states over here just say five. Remember that changing your max loop override is specific to the FSM. Me putting five in here means only this FSM has this maximum of five. If I made other FSMs, they would, they would be using the default 1000. 1000 loops is a lot. It's a pretty high number. So that's why the precaution is there. That's why that safety feature is there. You don't want your system crashing. Now that's all happening within this FSM, right? We have this max loop override for this FSM. That's Playmaker looking out for an infinite loop that it can count going between each of these states. However, if you made something that was say on a couple different game objects, so this is second loop machine, and you had an FSM on here, and you had something that was like, my global events one this is a global event so i can add this and if i do a send event and we'll say it's focusing on another game object and we're going to have it send an event over here to our loop machine so if i just got rid of these states And I added a global transition, my global events one. Okay, so this one has one too. So now both of these FSMs have this my global events. I can drag and drop this in here and send that off. Okay, so second loop machine is sending that off. And then when it's received over here, if we send in another one, that's now sending back to that machine so now this is going back and forth. This machine sends the event over here, then this one sends it back to here, and they just ping pong back and forth, sending that event to each other. There's no checks and balances here. Playmaker is not gonna keep track of this loop event because it's between different FSMs. If I hit play right now, there's a high likelihood that this would crash Unity. So I'm not gonna do it. And if this system didn't do it, there are certainly numerous other very simple setups where if the logic doesn't quite check out and you have it sending through loops over and over again between different systems, you could end up crashing Unity and losing your work. So don't make systems like that. So even here, this max loop override would not help. If you put it on here, these aren't gonna help you. So if you're ever working on your game and you find that Unity keeps crashing when you're getting to a certain point, you might want to check out your logic to make sure that there aren't hundreds or thousands of loops being attempted between different FSMs. Okay, but what if you wanted a system to be running every frame, right? You have plenty of other actions that run every frame. For example, set bool value. This could be running every frame. You can have this running every frame, setting a bool value to something, and you know, just whatever other dozens of other actions are running every frame. How would you set up an FSM with multiple actions that can run every frame without crashing Unity. Well, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna delete this too. Let's create a new game object and we'll call this safely running every frame. Okay, we'll right click, and add an FSM. And in here, let's set up a similar system where we have a send event. Okay, and it's just gonna send next. It's gonna go over here. And then we have another send event and it's going to send back this way. Okay, so this is broken. This would cause the infinite loop error, but if somewhere in here, just somewhere in the middle of this loop, you put in a next frame event, it's gonna drag this out into the canvas. I'm gonna put it here instead. And this next frame event, all it does is send an event on the next frame that Unity runs. So I'm gonna send next. And this just acts as a little buffer. I'm gonna send it here. So this chain now looks like this. Starts here, sends off here, waits a frame, then comes here, and then does that all over again. Okay, so if I press play, you'll see that our FSM continues to run just fine. Now this is running every frame and it isn't nearly as taxing on the system as it would be without the next frame event. So yeah, you can see the system, the whole thing is running through over and over again because each of our states is highlighted green.
It's happening so fast that it looks like all of them are running at once. Okay, so if I stop this, and if you just kind of do an int add, and you say number of loops, you add one, and I'm gonna turn on my stats up here, and I'm just gonna make sure number of loops is an output, so we could see it over here in our FSM. Okay, so we could see it over there. Right now, what should happen is because it's waiting for a frame to pass, the number of loops should match to our FPS. So every second, if we're running, say, 100 frames a second, that's what we should see getting added over here. So if I press play, all right, we're running at around 75 to 80 FPS. And over here, if you look at our number of loops, that's about what is getting added every second, all right? So that checks out. So all next frame event is really doing is it's waiting for one of the smallest units that we could possibly use to put a little buffer in the processing. Okay, so the same thing could be done by, for example, if I just deleted this little buffer, right? And we had this setup. For this setup, since we're using these send events, you could use a delay. So let's say this delay is half a second. And I'm just gonna turn off stats really quick. If I press play, because this delay is at half a second, we've introduced a forced buffer between the processes of this system. This one is firing off as fast as it can, but when it comes over here, we wait a while. This is essentially the same thing if you set this to no buffer and you put a wait action before it and you said wait half a second. And if this was an action sequence, right? So it does this first and then this, if I press play, It's like the same thing, okay? Because during an action sequence, each of our actions run in descending order from top to bottom. So this wait action gets processed first and then it does the send event. And you can see over here that we have the same sort of pulsing visual that we did when this send event had a half second delay on it. So there are a handful of times where you can just introduce a send event with a wait action that just waits like half a second or a second. So now that you know how to prevent the infinite loop error, you can go ahead and create systems that are running every frame or close to every frame without crashing Unity. However, when you are running into infinite loop errors, you should not have the knee jerk reaction to just throw in a next frame event. This feels like a magic fix for everything, but before you throw it in, what you should be doing first is taking a look at your system to make sure you don't have some funky logic like I showed you before, where you have something like your bool test and a bool flip that just creates your own completely useless looping system. Okay, so in the case with that bool flip scenario I showed you, if you came in here and just threw in a next frame event somewhere in between this, Right, if this was your setup. If you're waiting for this to turn true and then send over there, and then this, et cetera, et cetera. Putting in this next frame event, it might prevent the infinite loop error from happening, but now you've just created a completely useless system. Because now, what is even the point of having a bull flip and a bull test arranged this way? Definitely take a look at your systems first, because you might go the whole day thinking that your logic completely checks out. Sometimes you just need to take a break, wake up the next morning and look at it with a fresh pair of eyes because very often an error in your own game logic is the reason you're getting these infinite loop errors. And when it's not, then just remember you can rely on trusty old next frame event and the wait action. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.